Hi everybody, welcome back to another special webinar. Uh, today I'm co-hosting with Stuart Cowell. Uh, Stuart is not with us yet, he's going to join later. And we are going to cover the uh, Bank of Canada interest rate decisions today. Uh, let's see what will happen. Of course, most central banks recently are not doing uh, any changes in regards to interest rate policy. Uh, obviously, they are waiting for something. I don't know. Um, probably they are waiting for uh, the Fed to decide uh, if they are going to change their views in regards to interest rate policy change, rate cuts. So probably today we are going to look at um, no, we look at a, a, a common decision lately, a non-surprise, yes, uh, unchanged interest rate. Let's see what's going to happen. So the um, the decision is going to take place uh, at uh, a quarter to five uh, server time. So in about uh, 15, 18 minutes, basically. <clears throat> Be careful when Okay, I think we're back. Uh, possibly there was an internet disconnection. Okay, now it's it's fine. So I was saying that um, you should have a solid strategy uh, in place and uh, you should be extra careful when trading during this time when we have, for example, uh, internet decisions from central banks because there is increased volatility. Most of the time we see some jumps, then quick retracements and um, there is also the case where spreads might be uh, higher than usual due to uh, liquidity uh, levels changing during this time. So let's look at the charts. Basically, um, I will have the dollar. at top so we okay we will have some disconnection sorry for that I hope uh, we have poor network connection for some reason. Uh, I think the uh, the cable has some issues, but okay. I think we are we are fine for now. Please use the interface uh, to interact with me. Use the the Go Webinar interface. Uh, ask me a question. Uh, I will be happy to discuss with you uh, charts, uh, technical analysis, whatever you need to prepare uh, for this session. So we have the dollar cut. But as I mentioned, okay, for
Hiya. Hi, Stuart. Hiya. Sorry, Mario. I've, uh, <clears throat> I mean, I've had to come into this little booth downstairs, so that I'm a bit cramped. <laughs> but uh, we should be all right. What have you got on uh, Litecoin? That's that. Yeah, cool. All right. Oh, let me just get my... Hello? Hello? Can you still see yes. me? Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, All I right. can I, I can't see you now. I, I, I don't know why, but I, I face some uh, internet disconnections here. Maybe the service uh, has an issue. Uh, so I'm back now. I hope to. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that might be in the case because I had the same thing. It was saying it didn't recognize me. I've logged out, logged back in again, and it's free started go to webinar. So it looks all right at the moment. So uh, let me. I just need to open my calendar. So just bear with me a sec. All right. So, so uh, I was saying mm. that uh, today we might see, we might not see any. I've lost you again. Oh, God, it's not just let me. What's going on? Are you okay? I, it keeps freezing. I've I've lost your microphone now. Yeah, for some reason, you? I don't know. The, in the that is weird, I and that's in the office. Yeah, I changed also the connection here, but that's in the office. Uh, yeah, I, I changed to a different connection. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, you're all right now, but you keep it's every okay. time I. Yeah, I can't. I don't know what's going. I can't log into my the calendar for some reason. It's blocking me. Uh, I'm on. And I'm on the right VPN as well. But uh, anyway, <laughs> just have to play it by ear. It's usual. Uh, yeah, we, we we did Bank of Canada last time, didn't we? And there was uh, not a lot going on, if I remember rightly. What's caused that big move in the dollar just now? It's the last hour or so. It's big. Okay, I don't. Uh, I think I will continue to have these disconnections. For some reason, I will change again back to. Okay, I can hear you, but your pitch is frozen now. Have I been okay? Because sometimes it gets a bit iffy here. Okay, there Okay. Um, it's as if it's 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 it's, it's as if it's like buffering or something. It's allowing a lot of so much data through, and it stalls. It's, it's exactly the same time, like every after about five minutes or so. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I'm 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 all right now. Let's see. Okay. Uh, okay. So if it, ah, so. If it blocks again, I, I, I can take over. It's okay, but again, the, the connection here is not great. But uh, anyway, if we missed it, the, the, the news are out. Uh, obviously, <laughs> after after right. fighting with the internet connection for uh, for fifteen minutes. All right, minutes. don't worry, don't worry about. It. Let, let's let's start it anyway. See how many people are there. So obviously, we have. Uh, activity going on here, uh, uh, unchanged overnight rates, five percent as uh, as expected. But uh, nevertheless, we see movement for the dollar cut. It jumped uh, to the upside. Um, measuring the pips is about 15 pips, 16 pips. Let's see uh, exactly what happened with the Canadian dollar. 
Um, at this point, it's obvious that uh, the Canadian dollar depreciated. Yeah, but so nevertheless, the, the, the dollar was affected as well, yes. Um, actually, I'm not sure, actually. Wait a moment. Um, we, hmm. Yeah, we had those uh, we had those services PMI numbers for um, the US earlier. That caused that big move up, uh, nearly 52.9, the US um, PMI is in. That's uh, obviously weakened the dollar. Uh, and then the statement from the Bank of Canada has been very much uh, in line. No change at 5% as expected. Um, drops language about being prepared to hike, hence the, the weakness in the, um, the Canadian uh, dollar uh, as well. So it's been a so, bit of a mixed story there. Um, I, so... I, I, put the, I put the dollar index here because it, it, it seemed a little bit um, weird that the USD card is, is like um it remains on the on the upside uh, actually the dollar appreciated the canadian dollar uh appreciated as well but it, it quickly reversed um it quickly reversed to depreciation against the other currencies that's why for example the dollar cut here it has a shadow on the downside um and 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 this was the case but the, i don't know why the dollar uh as you mentioned uh something else happened at, at that time yeah, that caused the dollar the, to appreciate yeah yeah it's clearly the uh the statement uh which talks about uh dropping uh the lang it's again it's the language they use and sometimes the language they don't use last time they were talking about they, they are prepared to put a uh, re-hike rates that language seems to have been ameliorated quite a bit uh, i'm just looking at the highlights here uh consumers have pulled back their spending response to higher prices uh, growth in the U.S. has been stronger than we anticipated. The inflation rates in most advanced economies are expected to come down slowly. Uh, it, it's still quite sticky uh, up in Canada, although forecast for a 2.8% inflation year is down from 3%. So they are expecting it to continue to decline, uh, or decline through uh, 2024 um, and under that key 3% by the end of the year. Uh, so I think it's really it'll be the the sum. Uh, you'd have to we'd have to actually go through this the actual statement uh, and see the words that were changed. But that seems to be the mood that's taken um, markets um, uh, or what, why, how markets have reacted as they are. Obviously, a press conference uh, in 45 minutes will determine things. But yeah, dollar CAD now back to 134.50 and breaching that uh, from that um, initial sort of spike down to the 134.30 area. Here, I uh, say I don't know which the moving average is a determinant on the shorter time frame. So I've got a, a, a let's see, I've got a little five-minute chart on here, and it's testing the 200-period five-minute chart, and it's just going through that at the moment. The 15-minute chart, which you've got in your uh, analysis there, um, Mario, we're over the 50-period moving average there, and the 200-period on that 15-minute is 136, sorry, 134.60. So there might be some uh, shorts in play uh, there. If, uh, if it doesn't continue to trend high, because the, the reversal from 30, 134.50 uh, clearly hasn't happened. Um, so again, in the day traders, I'll be looking at um, you know 134.52, where the 50 period, 15 minute chart time frame is, and then the 200 uh, moving average sits at 134.60 uh, on that 15 minute time frame. But um, before the data, uh, dollar CAD moving lower on the uh, stronger PMIs out of the US uh, reversed uh, to clear all of that um, decline and we're testing the top of that candle as well 134.60 at the moment there we go so we'll just perhaps test that 200 period moving average I don't know how you're seeing that uh, Mario on your charts that's how I see it at the moment uh... But there are there are similar similar there are uh, similar paths when looking at the dollar cut and when looking at the dollar index there are similar paths with these two for example uh, in I think if I use a daily chart it's clear that uh, here in December we have a, we have an upward trend forming after a, after a downward trend yeah. Uh, if we look also at the USD cut, we can see similar paths. 
Yeah. We can yeah. see that it's a dollar that's driving uh, basically the pair and dollar appreciation. And, and why is that? I think that um, it's a trap. It's a trap that uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, dollar, let's say, fell into. Why I say a trap? Because when the statements from the Federal Reserve started to come out that they are going to proceed into rate cuts, uh, if, you, if you look at the timing of events, you can see that in, it's, it was about in November that the dollar started to lose value against the other currencies and we see the dollar cut you know it, it, it dropped significantly we see also other uh, dollar pairs having the same effect yes and because the other central banks are not you know stating anything about rate cuts i think the dollar is it lost a lot of value because of this reason then in uh, the beginning of this year, you see late December, beginning of uh, January, they spoke about, you know, the inflation rates higher than uh, was supposed to be in December, you know, and, and we, they are thinking of proceeding to rate cuts later. And all the economists that, uh, in, in Reuters poll, they said the same thing, that they are waiting for the second half of 2024 or not the second half, maybe a late first half. So in yeah, June, that May, the, yeah. the May meeting, yeah, 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 because it got, uh, you know, that decline we saw in uh, November and December for the dollar was really to do with this excitement that perhaps the uh, rate cuts were coming as early as the, the end of the first quarter in the March yeah, meeting, yeah. Uh, and that sort of di diminished quite significantly. And um, I don't know. Uh, we've had that stronger PMI out of the UK as well this morning, which suggests that you know the the Bank of England might hold rates higher for longer. But we'll see what they've got to say um, next week. Um, but yeah, as far as CAD's concerned, I'm just looking at my 15-minute chart here again. It's banging right into the 200 uh, period moving average on the 15-minute chart. So that's still got it's still got five or seven seven minutes or so to complete. So there may be some shorts around around about that 200. Uh, moving average, but uh, at the moment it's uh, the dollar uh, rising continually uh, against the CAD. So the combined um, sort of dovishness, which is obviously how the bar market has taken it from the statement from uh, the Bank of Canada, has uh, has moved that uh, that pair quite significantly. Uh, obviously, um, the the press conference in 45 minutes might throw some colour on that, um, but um, yeah, CADs uh, continues to weaken as you can see. That nice big spike there on your. Aussie CAD pair and you know, on your know, top right corner there. So yeah, it's uh, breached at uh, that 134.60 level quite significantly, 134.66 at the moment. So uh, yeah, still yeah, moving higher. There, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where where's the high of the day? So that then brings in the high of the day, which is around that 134.75 zone, which we uh, banged into uh, in the Asian session um, for dollar CAD week, week uh, European session for dollar against the CAD, but um, coming back now. So 134.75 is the day high uh, on that particular pair. Uh, I'm just looking at the other crosses as well. The uh, CAD Swiss has moved quite significantly. It's continued to trend low um, today. There's no change there. And um, <clears throat> actually, that's probably the stronger trending one. And CAD Yen, the other, uh, yeah, again, it's been moving low all day from a high of uh, 110.25. I don't know how many of you trade the CAD yen, but uh, 110.25 was a high uh, for the day. And we're now down at 109.23. And again, just off the lows of the day, but continuing to trend low significantly, Ollie. Uh, so it's a weaker CAD. Uh, clearly, uh, not from the fact they haven't uh, moved rates, because that was uh, more or less priced in. But obviously, the, the statement has caught markets uh, uh, that the bank kind of perhaps a bit more dovish um, than um, uh, than, uh, than perhaps others, but uh, yeah. So let's see if I see some more info on the statement while we're while we're chatting. Let's have a look again. Um... You know, by the way, it's uh, it, it's surprising that the uh, manufacturing PMI is above fifty. Yeah. Well, I again, mean, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's like a big, big, yeah. Yeah, it's again shown quite significant resilience. I think it's the only 
only one of the major economies again again it's that resilience in the u.s economy over 50 isn't it the uh it was particularly weak in Germany this morning. Or, well, it was better than better than than last month when it went to 40, uh, 40 was it 43.3 last month? Uh, but it's the 19th. I was just looking at the chart. It's the 19th consecutive month uh, of decline of contraction for for German uh, manufacturing. Uh, I, I'm not sure I would ever hear. Uh, <laughs> I'm really surprised I'm hearing myself say that. So it's the 19th month of uh, contraction, consecutive contraction. Uh, in the German economy. So some clear issues there um, and how they uh, recover from that will be uh, obviously key over the next couple of years as well, obviously as a major impact on the euro. So dollar CAD just keeps going, uh, 134.70 now, 134.70. So watch that high of the day, uh, 134.75. Uh, so any shorts that were on on those, those moving averages has not played out at all. Uh, the trend continues to move. So we've, so we've still got three minutes before this 15 minute candle. Uh, completes, but uh, you see the short term. I don't know if you put it up. I do got a five minute candle there, uh, Mario. But uh, that dollar cat has just rocketed, hasn't it? Look at uh, to the upside as the news is broke. <clears throat> there we are. Yeah. Bing, bing, bing. Um, obviously, obviously, the, the dollar also has uh, strengthened a, a, a little bit and pushes the pair uh, more. Uh, mm -hmm. And by the way, I prepared for you here today um, and also for quarterly reports, this uh, amazing <laughs> comparison <laughs> of, um, you know, the changes in interest rates uh, from the Federal Reserve and yeah. the U.S. inflation. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, I, I find it hard to believe. I, I think for me, it's obvious that the direction of inflation is not downwards <laughs> no. i mean well, the... it's, uh, yeah it's it's yeah it's, <laughs> as we've been saying all along you know in managing inflation and history shows us that as well no matter again no matter what economy you're in uh, getting getting inflation down and tending to trend con lower even though we spiked high because of you know the um uh, the supply chain constrictions and obviously the COVID impact and you know spending coming back and um the, the, the spike up and spike down but yes this is this is the yeah you know that flattening out is uh, fairly typical and it's just it's that it's always the last uh you know that last uh 10 getting it down to the two to three percent we got quite close and it's ticked up again uh, and your chart demonstrates that really nice 3.1 percent and then it bang back up so we may see a spike down but you know it is proving difficult to keep the trend down uh, as your you know that top chart there demonstrates quite nicely flattening out uh and obviously before that if we went further back you know it was much much higher up to nine and a half percent weren't we in the and the rate the rate hike has gone up really significantly so that argument as we see there five and a half percent the higher for longer mantra is as you know the market was correct in its interpretation there so there we go we uh i'm just checking dollar cad here it's testing the day highs here at 134.75 134.73 here on my chart um so it might want to take those uh those spikes higher out before we see some cooling. Uh, but uh, there we go. The 15 minute candle uh, has completed and it's a whopper. <laughs> it's a whopper on that dollar CAD uh, pair and also the uh, the other CAD crosses as well. Um, um, uh, CAD weakening significantly on uh, the statement more than anything. Um, see if uh, the central bank can, uh, uh, can change it. So, uh, unlike last time when we uh, looked at the dollar CAD, um, or we were here on the webinar for the dollar, uh, the Bank of Canada, uh, we've got a significant reaction. So it's that uh, key sort of cooling of the of the uh, of the words that's uh, moved uh, moved the Canadian dollar to the downside. Um, uh, CAD yen making new day lows at one or under one uh, one or nine at the moment, and uh, the I'm looking at here, CAD Swiss. Uh, dot 64 being tested dot 64 or six at the moment uh, so again just the trend moving low significantly during the day and and this is another uh nice graph uh yeah. that i prepared uh, we are looking at the interest uh sorry we're looking at the policy rates for each central bank and for bank of canada is the yellow line uh, obviously, it kept the 5% rate, 
for a long time since July, as I see here. Mm -hmm. uh, now again, uh, in, in January, we see again uh, 5%. And, um, you know, by keeping it steady, is this the uh, effect on uh, the, the, uh, the Canadian dollar uh, depreciation? Uh, this is the, you know, this is the question here. Because of keeping rate steady, we have depreciation of the uh, related currency. Uh, it, it seems a little bit weird to me, to be honest. Because well, we are talking about elevated rates, yes? We are not talking about uh, cuts. Yes, re re relative to where they've been, yes. Yes, relative to where they've been. Um, so... Um, but again, it's market expectation that, that, that again, as I said before, that the decline in the dollar in that November, December, um, titled middle to the middle of December was really on this excitement of they're going to be able to cut uh, earlier. That's obviously cooled a bit. Uh, but the data today, you'd argue, you know, maybe uh, they may need to keep them elevated because there is that demand, there is that resilience um, <clears throat> in the economy. So uh, hence that's added to the. Uh, this move, but yeah, it's and, certainly uh, the, 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 from the Canadian point of view, which is what we're talking about today, it's very much uh, obviously clearly the words in the in the statement that's caused it. So uh, big move uh, back. Um, obviously, we're at that the 134.75 here on, on uh, trading this news announcement. Uh, but you know, again, you don't have to move your charts very far to bring in the big psychological 135. And I don't know. Uh, if I look at my daily chart, we, we tested that last week sometime, um, but it was only on intraday basis. We did close above it, and it was last last um, last uh, it, uh, when was that? When it, uh, last Thursday, we were just peaked over 135. So perhaps that then brings that in into play as well. If we can close above this 135, it's 90 zone where we are now on an end of day basis, but it's been a very strong uh, one way traffic. Um, um, any shorts would have been. Uh, stopped out, I guess, on an intraday basis, but um, yeah, see how it cools. I uh, don't think there's much more data today, so let me just, uh, after this is the, it's uh, uh, still to come. Yeah, there's a, the inventories, which might obviously have a, or the crude inventories, which might have a, obviously an impact on the, uh, on the Canadian dollar as well. Um, US crude inventories, that is, of course. Um, and, um... By the way, I like the I like the hourly chart when you use it with the Bollinger Bands because they basically show the volatility, the recent volatility. Yes, the upper yeah, and yeah. lower level. So now yeah. we see this jump, we see this high volatility, and it's, it's a rapid price movement to the upside in regards to dollar cut. This is a possible um, end of the move. Uh, the upper level. It's quite possible that it will remain uh, on this um, 1.34900. Uh, and, and this is actually a previous resistance. So if it remains here, and obviously it starts from the lower level to the upper level, that's why I'm interested. The retracement is almost uh, imminent to happen. Yep. So it's a good opportunity yep. if we see, you know, further evidence that there will be a turning point on this resistance, yep. near this yep. resistance level. Yeah, it's also the that 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 uh, the where we are now that thirty four eighty eight or 30, let's say thirty four ninety for round numbers sake. Uh, it's also the uh, two hundred day. Uh, not the simple moving average, but the exponential moving average. And I know many traders use the exponential as opposed to the simple, but that's the uh, that's where the uh, simple moving uh, the exponential 200-day moving average sits as well. And we've run into this zone uh, for the fourth day now, um, <clears throat> um, having been over at uh, day five, day six, uh, if we count back. Uh, but we couldn't hold 135, so yeah, it's a crucial area, um, but um, it's still looking relatively strong. Uh, um, to the upside, uh, so the intraday. And, but by the way, uh, for for me, uh, honestly, for me, it's very weird that uh, okay, we are we are having let's say uh, 
Canada's central bank here, but and they are and they are taking decisions based on what they see in the labor market, what they see uh, 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 in regards to inflation, CPI in data and all that. Mm. But when we look at the um, US and we see that they have elevated rates, they keep it steady. The labor market it actually it's not cooling because if we look at the NFP data, we see higher and higher uh, reported figures. We also see today the PMIs are better. They have better figures than what was reported previously. The inflation rate, so another economic indicator, showing that it's not it's not lowering. Of course, the uh, the, the target level is two percent, mm -hmm. and it's not lowering. So and and they are speaking about rate cuts and all that. How are they going to do it? If if, if even in the even if, if even if they delay to uh, let's say another five months, they will still uh, be you know, uh, quick, I think they should allow for more data to come in. This is yeah, my I, guess because yeah. it's very quick. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, well, yeah, it's been very quick when they reacted as well. This 525 points have added to the US economy uh, from zero. I mean, the, the, the thing is, we need to flip it over a wee bit because obviously negative interest rates and zero uh, real interest rates are just, uh, you know, they don't make sense really in normal economic cycles. So it's, that was the odd thing out, not the fact that they've raised rates to sort of this 5% 5 level. So the fact, you know, the, the US economy is proving quite resilient. As you say, inflation isn't isn't coming down. They're still spending by the consumer. The, in, custom, uh, companies are still investing. Uh, and that's clear from the, you know, that, that very strong services number <coughs> for the data and those PMIs. Um, <clears throat> and it suggests that, you know, things are actually, are actually much more perhaps robust than we'd appreciate in the US economy. And there's more it, perhaps in external investors there. So this higher for longer, you know, it might not just be the three or four months people were talking about. It could extend, as you say, into, you know, later into the third quarter, uh, you know, just to be a uh, devil's advocate at the moment. Uh, after the summer, so yeah, um, that certainly the the chances of a March rate cut, I would guess, have uh, has gone down quite significantly on that PM just on that PMI data. So certainly not going to be doing anything next week on the thirty first. Um, yeah, yeah, certainly. Uh, thirty first yeah. of January. Yeah, we have the yeah. FOMC statement yeah. and the rate decision. Uh, you see also another chart here that I prepared. We mm. have the NFP numbers. And you see for the for the fourth quarter, yes, of 2023, yep. and we see the NFP, we see the numbers mm -hmm. here, 150, 199, 216. I mean, it's growing. <laughs> so mm -hmm. how can they speak about, you know, rate cuts soon when we have this? And uh, the other central banks are not even thinking about it. No, so I it, mean, it's, uh, it's kind yeah. of weird, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. when, when we, for example, the Bank of Canada, he, uh, they look at the uh, uh, employment change, which is actually uh, showing, uh, you know, cooling of the labor market. They are very, yeah, worse quite, than yeah. what we see in the US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it was yeah. Uh, that, that outlier month, in the, uh, the month before last, but last month when the, the non-farm payroll data came out, that Canadian data was, uh, was much weaker, wasn't it? Um, so, yeah, so um, as far as the currency pairs are concerned, yeah, um, we do seem to be perhaps struggling at that 200 day moving average around that 134 80 134 90 zone um so um yeah, yeah. now that the, the shock of the, or the, the news is being absorbed perhaps do we now wait uh, for a full 20 minutes uh, until the, uh, the anything is said at the not really at the statement it'll be the question and answers session that goes on uh, with the only thing that perhaps uh, moves it now but um yeah a uh, big, big rally for dollar CAD, uh, double edged, the strong PMIs out of the US and the uh, cooling of the uh, sort of hawkish words from the uh, Bank of Canada. So we've got a weaker Canadian dollar today. Uh, I haven't really looked at, uh, you had the pound CAD there, didn't you? Yeah, pounds had a, a pretty strong run. And it's um, uh, quite a run up as well. Let me have a look at on my. Right, yeah, so you, you see, when looking at the pound cut, also we see that the you know the initial reaction to um, 
the initial reaction basically on the Canadian dollar is depreciation and mm -hmm. uh, sorry appreciation against the other currencies and immediate um, immediate uh, depreciation after that. So the dollar yeah. cut, the pound cut, they moved to the upside. Of course, the dollar cut was pushed a little bit more because the dollar was also uh, you know experiencing some yeah. strength. Yeah. And I, I like that because it, it you know it created this opportunity uh for yeah. tracement uh, however yeah. in uh, about 20 minutes uh actually 18 minutes is going to be the start of the press conference press as conference well yeah, you yeah. might see more yeah. volatility possibly possibly um yeah so you got what, what your top of your fib there on that dollar cad uh, chart uh mario is that uh, is that that uh, the 134.90 level just shy sorry of, which uh, chart the Sorry, minutes. dollar cad. I've just seen you put a, 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 a fib retracement on there on that dollar cad. Ah, yeah. I use the five minute chart below, That's the 15 minute, minute chart above. The five minute chart, yes, it's just to see more closely ah, right, yeah, yeah. what is Sorry. happening with yep. the yep. with the yeah. Sorry, point. I didn't. I didn't. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that again, so yeah. you can see that. So the five minute, obviously leading the 15 minute, uh, we have stalled at that. At uh, that uh, 134, 90, 85 sort of zone, um, and down the last two candles as we got to the top of the hour, which is interesting as well, isn't it? So, yeah, people have ran that for that 15 minute candle, and um, uh, let's see where we go. So, big wick on that uh, current 15 minute candle as well. Yeah, nice. Well, you know, when and, and people also have to, you know, take into account the fact that. Uh, when when we are looking at news announcements, we have to have in mind what kind of impact it will create in the market. Is it going to be a huge deviation from the moving average? Is it going to have a long-lasting impact? Is it serious? Is it not serious? And that's the reason why it will have a small impact. For example, today we are expecting that it's not going to be any you know long-lasting, at least in the short term, impact in the market. So one way direction is almost impossible that's why you know i mentioned retracement most of the time because the market will eventually um retrace back to the moving average the intraday mean yeah so that's why yeah. i'm using the yep. 15 minute uh, yep. time frames the hourly yep absolutely couldn't agree more with you as i said the next year so if we're going, we are going to retrace here on the the, the 200 period uh, moving average the highest one uh, sits at 134 60 62 um and we're uh, back to 134 75 that that you know previous high of the day is where we're back to now and we haven't spiked to the 134 uh 90 level couldn't move another 10 pips to bring in 135 so um um sort of rolling over currently but we'll see you know where oh it goes might be just profit taking um in the short term uh, on that uh, first half an hour after the uh, date has come in. Guys, uh, 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 visitors here, uh, is there any particular asset you want us to have a look at? It doesn't have to be the CAD, it could be anything else. Uh, do let us know, stick it in the question box. Uh, we are here to help. You're all very quiet today again. I uh, don't know whether that's because uh, it's it's the uh, the Canadian dollar or, uh, or what we're talking about, but uh, do let us know if you've got any questions, uh, any chart you want us to have a look at. Uh, but certainly, CAD's been the certainly the uh, the most volatile of the major currencies today, as you would expect. Obviously, when a, a, a central bank has got something to say, uh, the most important thing that influences a, a a currency is what the central bank's policy is and what the central bank announcements might be. So, we've had a classic today of uh, a statement being changed and tweaked, uh, which has caused the market to change its immediate perception on the, the Canadian dollar. So. And the Canadian dollar weakening um, some 30 minutes now after the announcement uh, and still 15 minutes before um, the, uh, the the board or certainly the chairman uh, has something to say in front of the press. So 134.72 for dollar CAD at the moment. Uh, so I see Gerard is with us again. Hello. Any questions? Something you want to discuss, any pair that you yeah. would like to see. We didn't say anything so, about the stock market, um, no. the uh, stock market open, but uh, I would like to, 
use the S and P chart. Yeah, new all day, all all, all time high again yesterday. Uh, I'm just gonna have, have a look at the oil market as well because obviously that's the next news announcement up. But uh, mm -hmm. continuing to bang into 75 today. It's sort of, again sort of biased to the upside a wee bit, but um, so much geopolitics obviously around the the oil market at the moment. Uh, yeah, sorry, Mario, you sound about the Nasdaq 100. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, you know the uh, the stock market lately, it's like it it it, it it's it's a, it's an uptrend, and it was resumed actually. Uh, the market passed for a while uh, on the 22nd, but later it it started to move again upwards. Yeah, it 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 obviously you will see some retracements uh, during the day when it's an uptrend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, every time we see uh, that the price returns back to the mean, but later continues uh, the upward movement. Uh, we cannot say anything at the moment significant about this, only that, uh, you know, the stocks picked up a lot. And the only thing that um, can explain this, let's say, is that the dollar is now weaker. So it allows for more investing in stocks, you know, because the exchange cost now is lower. You know, uh, at least this is one of the reasons that can explain this as well. The other reason is that uh, the implications in the markets are not, you know, as expected. The market is not, it's hot. <laughs> I'm talking about the labor market, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the, the it's moving. Uh, it, there's business activity. We see lots of activity going on, and investors are not hesitating to invest more in stocks. Also, we have the earnings season as well. Yeah, well, it's it's proven quite well. I mean, ironically, uh, it was one of the weakest starts to the year in a long time. I can't remember what the, the actual dates were, but the first three or four days of the new trading year were very negative. Um, uh, it looked like that that uh, 4800 level on the on the Nasdaq had been uh, on the S and P had been rejected, and then we we moved higher. But uh, um, uh, yeah, I mean it was last Friday that huge candle when it broke the big psychological 4800 level uh, was the one that really has uh, sort of uh, cemented the breakout. If indeed it proves to be a breakout, well that was a significant. Uh, just again, just looking at the size of the candle. Uh, supported by the your 20 and your 30 day moving averages big breakout there there you go that that your trend line there we broke through that triangle and off it's run and uh it's probably run i mean if you're trading that triangle there that you've got in your little chart there mario that's uh that's completed that move hasn't it um so uh so but yeah uh, where are we now i'm looking at my futures chart here and we're at uh, four four thousand nine hundred uh, we're testing that yeah. and it's been on the back of you know the week that the, the bank earnings that started kicked it all off uh, on the 14th were in line with really more or less in line with the uh, you know, expectations they were weaker than expected uh some of them had a really poor fourth quarter or had a really good fourth quarter but a poor overall year um oh, sorry and, and vice versa some of them had a, a, a quite a good year and a poor fourth quarter but overall that was more or less in line but some of the tech numbers that have come out have been relatively strong. We've had some good retail numbers out of the, the big European retailers um, today. Obviously, they're not necessarily quoted on the US markets, but uh, that gives a um, a further buoy to that. And Netflix last night had really good subscriber numbers. We got Tesla uh, tonight, and obviously some big tech num names in, in the next couple of weeks: Apple and Amazon and Google and uh, and Facebook and the Meta Group and what have you. So um, the big players are still very much in play. Uh, and the the chips as well, the chip companies still holding things up. So it looks like it's bid, even though you know the dollar has come back and it's a wee bit more expensive than it was um, after that decline of November, December, uh, or November and half of December. So yeah, stock market's still holding up really well. Sorry, I asked about oil, and uh, you brought that up, and I've, I started talking about the stock markets again. No, but, it's, uh, it's 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 an interesting subject to speak about stocks uh, currently because. Yeah. When you look at uh, we we have earnings for the for the yeah. uh, released for the quarter uh, the fourth quarter of uh, 2023, and when people are analyzing what was happening and what is going to happen, it creates this big interest for investing in stocks. Why? Because 
they are expecting that in 2024, they are going to have higher earnings, earnings per share. Yeah, they are, they are expecting, they are forecasting that after the uh, first uh, one, two months of 2024, we are going to have higher earnings. They are, uh, the businesses are going to have more earnings. So this means that, of course, they are going to invest more in stocks. So the, the optimism is higher. And, and we also uh, we also saw that uh, um, uh, the consumer expectations are also uh, in, in a very good level. So yes, yeah, the... basically the optimism has is back and con consumers yeah. are driving sales. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and and that's been the thing. So now the issue now from here is, uh, well, was that on the back of the fact that were, the, the market was perhaps expecting an early interest rate cut as early as March, uh, May? Uh, you know, the fact that this data is so resilient is that going to push the Fed to keep these high rates high for longer, like we said before, move it, you know, into the third quarter and not the second quarter. So that might cool that. So it's always that balancing act, isn't it? And has the stock market, you know, run its course? It's in a very traditional strong time of the year as well, that seasonality we always talk about as well. November, December, typically very strong uh, for stocks and the January effect when everybody starts, uh, you know, churning and reinvesting in in their, uh, their key portfolios perhaps for the rest of the year. Uh, that is, I had uh, certainly come into play. Um, the end of the month now, you know, those those guys that are just trading it is, is in in focus as well. Now that's only that's a week away. Um, so February could be particularly volatile. We could have a big sell off in February. Who who knows? Nobody knows. But certainly the the US the oh, the main story is the US economy is obviously proven much more resilient and and um, and the jobs market much hotter than many had expected. You know, eighteen months ago, which is what these investors are always looking for they're looking they're investing for you know, looking at the 12 month the 18 month uh time frame so um yeah and because of you know again history because we had such a strong 2023 uh it's the fourth year of the uh, election cycle in the us as well again that's usually an okay year having had a strong third year and a strong 2023 so we could be as much as you know 10 percent higher from the close of december 23 at the end of uh, 2024 but obviously that's a long way away uh, at the moment so um guys uh as i say uh, any particular other assets you want to have a look at uh, we haven't talked about gold yet today i know it's everybody's favorite and and uh, mario's is that the yeah that, is that march or the May? yeah the march meeting there so yeah the, um, we we know that the uh the january <laughs> is 97 yeah, so it's almost certain yeah that's not no brainer yes change. yes yes this is march um yeah. This is March, so, and obviously, the, there is uncertainty. It's obvious yeah. here. When you yeah. see 50 50, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, are they, they, are, they don't know but, what yeah. No, so the chances of a cut slipping quite significantly. What's the May one while you're there, Mario? Just flick to the May, May the 1st. What's that uh, saying like now? May, the next one? it's a bit more. Yeah, so again, so 50 okay, 50% 50 chance yeah. of, a, of a, yeah, of a cut. Yeah. There is some, there is but, some, there is some fifty percent almost for a cut, as I see yeah. here. Yes. Yeah, so um, but but we we passed this, I think. I mean, um, well, maybe it's it's that thirty-two percent of a whole basis point. Was so, um, yeah, yeah. Well, let's take. I don't know about tell. January. January, you see, if I if I go to January, I see June, June, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, further yeah. cuts. <laughs> yeah. I see further yeah. cuts, and it's almost certain. Yeah. <laughs> It's like oh, that, that, I mean, that's that, that uh, again. The, the 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 again, the broader market. There will be the market is now saying there will be cuts in uh, 2024. You know, and that that whole scenario may be proved wrong, but it's looking. Um, uh, it might not be as much many as uh, and as much as people think, and it could be higher for much longer than people think as well. Potentially, you know, if this market still proves very resilient. Uh, obviously, I mean, as we go further into the year. The Fed, not that they won't do stuff, but the politics comes into play as well. Once the election cycle gets into full swing, um, and that's looking like it's going to be the, the two old boys against each other again, uh, a very divided uh, United States. Uh, Trump looks like he's an actual shoe in for um, the, um, 
the uh, nomination for the Republicans. Uh, but you never know what comes around the corner. I mean, this I remember uh, talking at the beginning of uh, 2020, uh, and Trump looked like a shoe in for the the election in 2020, and then along came uh, coronavirus, and um, you know his handling of that was a, one of the key reasons perhaps he didn't uh, get re-elected uh, in 2020. So anyway, um, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Uh, so interesting that gold's reacted like it has on that those stronger um obviously the us pmi data i guess is uh pulled the gold price down back to the 2030. mario should we wrap this up if we've got no questions from anybody uh we'll go and listen to the unless you want to hang on for the uh, start of the news conference see if there's any we, we can to... we have questions all right, sorry, I didn't. I we have them. questions uh, about gold All right, from Terence. All right, sorry, uh, there we go. Yeah, on the on the question mark. Okay, yep. so uh, an interesting question, actually. Um, you know, gold. Uh, if we look back with the hourly. Chart, We're losing you, Mario. I don't, know if, I don't know if it's just me. Mario, shall I take over? Yeah, yeah. Uh, something's yeah. happening with my connection. All right, okay. Let me see if I can. Uh, let me see if I can share my my screen. Uh, so hopefully you can, uh, guys, I hope you can see my screen now. I don't know if Mar yeah, Mario looks like he's he's frozen, well, the screen's frozen. This is the, it's a bit messy, this one. This is the my hourly chart on the daily time frame. So you can see, oops, oh, my, my, my <laughs> I was having problems here. My, uh, my cursor's not moving. Here you can see it uh, clearly, let's, let's put that on there. So we've uh, top, topped out here, and uh, we're in a bit of a decline. This is the the blue line is the 50-day moving average. Let's zoom this up a wee bit. Um, Terence, what's your outlook of gold? So the outlook. So this is the 50-day moving average. So we did briefly uh, crack it, and it looked like you know two big down days here um, last week, but we've recovered quite significantly. Although that was you know an engulfing candle the day, there, so it's still the regular week, but we have closed above that, so we're, we're right into this key level. So from a horizontal level, uh, for me, uh, historically, obviously the big round 2000 level is absolutely you know key, psychological, big round number. And we've been over that, as you can see, all of January and indeed uh, most of December as well. So once we got back over it, we've held it and we've rallied to the upside. I'll come back to that in a minute. So 2000 is a big support level to the downside. This level here, this technical 2009 level, sounds like an odd number, but 2009, it was a it was a big decline level from when the market had moved. If I zoom this in, see, just keep your eye on that that level there, that 209. This was that top that we'd reached uh, at the end uh, of October, <clears throat> and then we declined during uh, November. So that was our, our top that we had to get through, which we did. And so we've been we've been through it, back through it, back up to the top, and then back down to support. So so 2000, 2009. Then I've got here 2030 and 2050 basically in round numbers. This is, I know it says 2048, but they're the round numbers to the upside. So currently, here on end of day basis, uh, gold is relatively well sort of uh, sort of sideways action really. Uh, so it's supported by the 50-day moving average, although at the moment we're under it again. Uh, but we need to break this this up trend line. Uh, this so we need to break over this horizontal line and this trend line. So the key. Oh, for me, this is this magenta line here is the, the 21 exponential moving average. So that's flattened out at the next level. So uh, 2030, we need to see the candle break above that level uh, to move forward to to test the next level here at 2050. That isn't happening at the moment. So it's sideways uh, from Friday so far this week uh, with support down here at 209 and 2000. Um, so that's the sort of the, the daily time frame. If we go up to the weekly, uh, time frame, you can see, you know, we've topped out at this 2080 level, 
Um, and uh, it's another down week so far. Obviously, we can't make any announcements or decisions on this candle because we're only uh, two and a half days into it. But last week was a was a down candle as well, wasn't it? And you see the resistance there is that previous line from our daily time frame, that 200, that 2050 level or 2049. So the weekly remains uh, down. And if we went up to the monthly, that's also uh, sort of rolled over. Uh, we had a big down month. Um, or we're having a down month for January, although we'd had a big up month the final three months of uh, of 2020. Um, uh, three. So it's a currently a, a rolled over as well. So the weekly's down, the monthly is sort of rolling over, uh, and the daily is currently is going sideways. So to take a long position on end of day base, you want to be above 2030. To take a short position, really, you want to be certainly under this 50 day moving average and under 2020 on an end of day basis. Uh, Terence, I don't know what time you, you said the outlook, so I guess that's what you meant. But if you were trading this, uh, I don't know, let's go down the time frame. So if you're trading this same setup, same sort of moving average uh, scenario, if we were saying that the 15 minute time frame, you can see what's happened. Uh, anticipation of uh, the news, there's that daily trend line. We've broken it earlier uh, before the news broke. Here's the uh, news breaking here at certain, uh, in fact, it was here, wasn't it? 1645. Uh, uh, and it's broke down quite significantly, hasn't it? So there we are, back to 2020. Um, uh, uh, so that would have been long, closed out here, and then perhaps gone short on the end of uh, this one here, then another 21 at 20, 29.50. And that's continuing uh, to move down there on that 15-minute chart. The hourly chart, uh, there we go. Um, big reaction to the, uh, the, the PMIs from the US and the CAD news. And we're down uh, and pr producing now. Where are we? So it's the law of the week. So this is Wednesday, um, Tuesday, Monday. So the law of the week was here at uh, 2016.59. Uh, and we're currently trading at 2019.33. So that yet, may yet be tested if we break these, they see these spikes here later in the day. So we've tested that already. So perhaps it looks like that's. That next level here could be tested on an intraday basis as far as the week's concerned, this week's concerned. So uh, so a week up here on the one hour chart, uh, daily chart, bit of a sideways action. We talked about the times you'd need to look at that. And uh, just for split the difference, we look at the four hour chart. Uh, zooming that in. Again, the trend is sort of the, to the downside. You see we're looping down, re, re, retrace, leg down, retrace, and then let's this, see the extended sideways action there on that four hour chart, much more emphasized than the uh, daily chart. So you can see the key levels there, but they're still in play, aren't they? The 2030 and where we are now, that 20, uh, 20 level becomes more key on the four hour time frame. Uh, Terence. Um, um, Mario, you're back. You okay? Yeah, yeah all good. good. Okay. <laughs> I, so, I, Terence, I you... switched to another. Yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, do you think the dollar is going to depreciate during this week? Uh, well, uh, as we've seen, it, that doesn't look like the case, does it? Um, this is the dollar index. Uh, and again, sort of a bit of sideways action on the daily time frame. So there's a key resistance, that 200-day uh, moving average here on the dollar index itself. So oh, it's, uh, so through there, that's 103.52. Uh, we've tried to break it over the last few days. It hasn't happened, hasn't happened. Yesterday, we closed just over it, not significantly, but into another key resistance area at 20, 10360. And then today, we've turned around and moved to the downside. So we're currently under the 50 day moving average, the uh, blue line, and the 20, and sorry, the uh, 21 day moving average. The issue here as a trend follow is that these, these moving averages are now out of sync because we've got the, 20, the 200, the 50, and the um, uh, 20, that's not how I think they're, they're actually in sync when we're talking about uh, for, for a descending uh, market, okay, because we've got the higher resistance, the me medium speed, and the fast speed. So, we need to, if we're going to break down, we do need to break under 102.88 or 102.90. Uh, and we're having a go at it uh, currently today, but at the moment, it's still looking sort of biased to the upside. So, again, difficult to tell. The interesting is this, this gap we had here. Um, um, the, the jump we had up um, to 103, uh, this, this gap that hasn't been filled with the full bar. It's been filled with the, the wicks, but not the full bar. So, uh, yes, yeah, difficult to tell with the with the dollar. So we had this big trend down for November, December. 
uh, turned around for January, as, as Mario was saying earlier, but we've run into this resistance here to the 103, 50, 103, 60 zone. So uh, one day obviously doesn't break the trend, but it's at the moment, uh, this, this candle is looking quite a significant engulfing candle. See, it's, see, so lots of indecision, one, two, three, four, five days, and now we're a big down day. So a break under 103, and we could see, you know, one or two tested quite quickly. Uh, certainly one or two fifty tested quite quickly. So possibly is my answer. Uh, although you say this week, you know, there's only uh, two and a half days left of the week. Uh, but if you mean from this Wednesday to next Wednesday, yeah, quite possibly. But quite also, we could still continue this uh, consolidation phase between this 103.60 and the 103 zone as well, going sideways. So hope that's answered your question, Terence. Um, going forward. I don't know how you're trading this, what time frame you use or what strategy you use. If you're a trend follower, if you're a mean reverting type trader, if you're a technical trader or just trading, trading the uh, price action. Do let us know because we, we can talk about all sorts of approaches to trading. It's all about you know, getting your mind right, managing your emotions, uh, trading, to be honest. Um, lots of people focus too much on trying to read the charts and read things into the charts that aren't there or see things that aren't really there. They want to want to see it they convince themselves that it's going up and it's not so i don't know i don't know what you would say on that mark uh mario i seen gold going to 2000 right okay so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah well yeah there we are gold certainly big down uh this is obviously the four hour chart but uh, uh <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a, 2050 it's a little bit uh, yeah. um You know, I've lost you again. I've lost you again. Yeah, so big again. I mean, obviously, I say this is a, um, it's just started this candle and we're only an hour and a half into a four hour candle. But see how it's engulfed all this previous action here. Uh, and back to, and we've broken that 2020 area as well. So, uh, yeah, getting weaker uh, as the hourly candle. Big down candles uh, following the uh, strong PMIs that Hello. we said earlier from the US. Hi, yeah, we're back. You're back. And the uh, Canadian bank uh, maintaining. So let's have a see if he started talking. Sorry, he should have, <laughs> should have started talking. Let me do. We're just going to tune into the. So this press conference has got anything to say. So you, you have the like... gold chart, yes? Yes, that's the gold chart on the one hour time frame. Yeah. Okay. Why I was saying that gold might see 2000 is because I understand from the dollar index, the dollar index is not moving currently, but gold, gold's price is moving downwards, which means that people are ditching gold for some reason and mm -hmm. they are uh, putting, they are investing somewhere else. Uh, it's not the dollar, something else is happening here. Um, uh, and, and the dollar actually, it's, it's quite uh, impossible to have a further drop at least during during the next uh, two days period this week basically or, or three because we are because people are waiting for the uh, meeting also on the 30 on the mm, 31st of uh, january so they are not going to react to uh, in this way there is nothing to react to basically there's nothing happening so how can the dollar, you know, deviate a lot from the moving average? It's going to stay in range and the and gold. And actually, I'm expecting the dollar to appreciate against the other currencies and gold also mm -hmm. to, you know, fall further. Now it's on uh, 2018.5 and there is a resistance level there. We can see a consolidation phase that lasted for four uh, days. Uh, it's obvious that uh, the resistance is around 2037-38. The support is now on 2018. So further drop means 2000 for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I was saying, I don't know, you, you obviously we lost you, but as I was saying to Terence, for me, 2009 is quite a key level as well. So, but yeah, that, that is on the way obviously to 2000. You're right, yeah. I mean, there is plenty. I mean, there's plenty of things that could move. The, obviously, the gold is still a very geopolitical asset as well. So there's still a lot of that in the mix. 
uh, and we've still got uh, other central banks to to have their say as well over the next uh, next week. Obviously, topped by the the Fed next Wednesday. Um, we've got uh, we've got that uh, PCE data as well. Don't forget that on Friday, guys, as well. That's uh, the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. They prefer the uh, this price index um, um, uh, accelerator or deflator, as they call it. Um, for the measure of job uh, of uh, inflation and uh, pr price pressure in the U.S. economy, so watch that on Friday as well. So, um, and obviously tomorrow, uh, Mario with uh, Frank tomorrow uh, as we uh, we look at what the ECB have got to say. So um, interesting that the the, the the dovish Bank of Canada have uh, have kicked off. Uh, inventories, interestingly, have just come out as well. Big drawdown, uh, 9.2 million. Uh, barrels much mm. much more than expected. It was expected about 2.1 uh, million barrels, and it's actually come in uh, 9.2, so nearly four times more uh, than expected. So oil is appreciating. And uh, let me just go back to the 15-minute chart. Um, oil is appreciated there, uh, spiked then at five minutes over the $75. So it's ticking to the upside on that uh, big drawdown in the, the EIA US weekly inventories um, so oil uh, but yeah it's, a, it's, it's mm. found it's found it's difficult to, yeah yeah it's a big figure but it's found difficulty getting over $75 but it's if you look at the daily chart here you can see it's building up quite although the candles aren't huge that it's building up a bit of momentum to that 75 level so again you'd like to see a break uh, like we saw here, but then it all collapsed down again. So it's a big resistance, seventy-five dollars, a hugely psychological number as well for many traders. Um, uh, the uh, seventy-five dollar level on the WTI, uh, <clears throat> with the futures contract rolling over as well last week. So um, see how that goes. But again, relatively bid the oil. No, mark. it's it's a uh, high volatility basically. If we look at the four-hour chart and how it was, you know, it was in a the moving average basically is sideways. It's it does not have any, you know, specific trend, but uh, the deviations that I see here for oil uh, reach uh, twenty dollars. Uh, sorry, mm. uh, one point uh, um, two point two dollars. Sorry. So mm. uh, two hundred points. That, yeah. And this is daily, yeah. And mm. and two dollars daily deviation is actually high. So a one and a half two dollars deviation. Yeah, yeah, it's from uh, that mean. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. But as you can see on that on the chart there, it's sort of it is sort of angling high in this second half of uh, January. But uh, whether it can hold that or not, or this big horizontal resistance there, uh, seventy five dollars certainly. Uh, and and, yeah, and any more questions? Yeah. Uh, there's nothing. Let me just go back to the dollar CAD whilst uh, obviously it's the currency of the of the moment the CAD pairs. Uh, there we are, that um, um, uh, sort of resistance has played out, the 70, uh, the 130, this 134.90, this high and, uh, from uh, yesterday, um, and the high of the day was still holding there uh, uh, at 134.75, but uh, certainly those uh, positions um, and shorts that are placed up here have, uh, are sort of playing out, but again, it doesn't really want to go down, does it? Um, so holding up, there's nothing uh let's turn that around uh in this in the press conference i would guess uh, i couldn't find a link to the i was trying to find it, some comments from uh, the uh head of macklem um yeah he's talking about yeah he's again he's reiterating i've just said here he's reiterating uh needs more progress on uh progress in inflation so very central bank speak uh, before discussing rate cuts and uh, so it's that dovishness in the statement which he's uh, re-emphasizing now so hence the, we might see this uh, dollar cad start to move back to test that uh, even 135 level but certainly the, uh, the, the 134.90 level uh, up there so um, and um, and um, yes yeah, stocks are holding up as I said, we last time we looked um, S and P was at that three nine level, wasn't it? There we are. Um, so the upside. Oops. Let me just go back. So there we are. Yeah. So that's the the news of the day as well. Stocks positive, dollar positive. Uh, S and P uh, pushing to new intraday all day all time highs over four thousand nine hundred. That'll capture some headlines. 
later on, no doubt, in the in the financial press, uh, and then that obviously brings in the inevitable chatter uh, about the magic five thousand level for the S and P five hundred. Um, uh, there'll be that'll be written somewhere. I'm I'm bound to see that somewhere in some financial uh, uh, article over the next couple of days. The five thousand level for the S and P five thousand. But as I say, uh, as we've said many times, it's not really the uh, the S&P 500, it's the S&P 7, isn't it? These big tech stocks are, uh, that are really holding this uh, this market up uh, and see how their actual, what their earnings look like over the next couple of weeks as well will be absolutely key. So uh, maybe some profit taking come along, but 4,900 breached on the S&P 500. And I guess the Nasdaq's following through as well. Yeah, 4,600 has been taken out. Uh, by the Nasdaq 100 or 17,600 has been taken out by the Nasdaq uh, 100 as well as we start. Uh, we'll get into full trading on the US trading day. So interesting, uh, interesting webinar today, guys. Uh, any final questions, guys, before we wrap it up? Anybody? Terence, I hope we answered your question. I don't know if you're still here. I can't, uh, I can't actually see if you're still here. Um, yeah, no, Terence has disappeared. Okay, I'll uh, wrap it up, uh, Mario. Unless you got something else you want to add? Um, no, I'm I'm just looking at crude oil. I see the um, uh, the previous weeks uh, minus nine million in inventories. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, basically inventories because Interest, yeah. minus means that there are more bars in inventories. There's no change, positive change. Yeah, draw, yes. it's draw, draw and, down. Yeah, they call it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, and I look also at the price, and it seems that it's quite resilient to the downside. So um, it's trying to break the seventy-five dollar point five. Mm. Uh, mm. The uh, there is a triangle formation uh, on the technical as uh, from a technical perspective, let's say. Also, so um, we should have eyes on this one. I mean, uh, breakout to the upside is uh, possible. It's quite possible. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. As, as I said earlier, they, they certainly this this uh, daily time frame is certainly trending higher. As you saw here, that as I said earlier, they we moved up quite quickly to breach seventy five dollars the first time here in December. It's been a bit slower and steadier uh, this time. The candles aren't as big, uh, but obviously anything can happen in the oil market. There's so much uh, geopolitics around it. Uh, we had that story of uh, Libya trying to increase production this week uh, when we spiked down, but uh, how much production Libya is going to really get into the market, we'll see. Uh, but obviously the situation in, in the Middle East and the, not just between Israel and Gaza, but uh, the, the wider uh, Middle East region will obviously have an impact on the oil price as well. And nervousness continues to, to abound there. So hence $75 being, being tested quite significantly. There is obviously a $17 support there that is tested too many times mm -hmm. without success. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, you know, it's like a turning point here that lasts mm -hmm. too long, more than two months. I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. Last time it tested the 70 was um, in... Uh, Begin December. 13 and of December. December. Yeah, yeah mid-December, yeah. basically. Yeah, when we, and then we 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 then went down to this 68 level, which we we'd seen here uh, in the spring. So during April and May, we'd been quite significantly down, testing 68, 68. But then the 70 level here has provided key support, and that's provide that obviously that was the spring. This is the winter, where demand is a bit stronger. So we found more buyers at 70, and again here at the beginning of the month, and then we're gently moving up. So you know that. I mean, the issue is you could see that this this pattern here potentially repeating. So this trend up here is more or less, uh, you know, it's not exactly the same angle, but it's, you know, it's pretty similar. So $75 is proven quite a resistance level. As I said before, it's quite a big psychological level. Um, so put this break. This is the first, second and third time we're testing this level. So perhaps we may break through this and take us back to the, this eighty dollar level, who knows? But at the moment, it's yeah pushing higher, and that was a big drawdown. Okay, guys, thanks very much for your time. Um, do join Mario and uh, Frank tomorrow for uh, the ECB announcement. See what Mr. Lagarde's got to say. Uh, this is a great uh, talker. Um, see what the outlook is going to look like. 
uh, from uh, the ECB's uh, two-day meeting as well. So thanks for your time. We'll see you all again tomorrow. All the best, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.